Hey, guess what? It's still cold and rainy. <laughs> First thing this morning, I've got Jay-Z Fire Extinguisher Service out here, a local extinguisher service company, and they're gonna look at all of our fire extinguishers that we have around the farm here. I don't remember exactly how many there are. He's got that number, but basically he goes through, makes sure they're pressurized, makes sure they're full, puts a new tag on them just to say they've been inspected. He uh, makes sure that if we need them, they're gonna work, and if we've used them, that they're back up to snuff. Oh, this is just lovely conditions every day out here. That's a big one. That's what she said. Didge, it's just the birds. Overall, I know there's around two dozen, maybe more than that spread around the farm, in the shops, in the combines, in the semi trucks in the race trailers, in the house, everywhere. I forget three or four every year. I do the best I can. All right, 19 fire extinguishers, all inspected and positioned back in their standard positions, plus a couple more ordered. Whee! I got Jim coming out this afternoon just for a little bit. We're gonna go through the 9570R. It's a pirate's favorite tractor. <laughs> That's the best dad joke you're gonna hear on this video today. There shouldn't be too much we gotta do to it, kinda like the last 9570 we had in here. We, we haven't put a lot of hours on it since we bought it. So we'll go through it, make sure everything is good. Again, it's even slimier now than it was in the last video, so we're not gonna drive down and hook up the tillage equipment. It's just, it's annoying. But I am gonna turn the heat up because Jim doesn't like to be cold, neither do I. Anna. Do you have any information for us? Oh, yeah, well, geez, this video is brought to you by Bespoke Posts. And we'll go up from 51 to 55. Now, I'm gonna throw the prescriptions for the variable rate seating into the planter tractor before I forget and lose them. This is all the files that will actually load onto the computer program into the tractor that will tell the planter and the whole system exactly how many seeds per acre to plant on which parts of which fields. So that's determined mostly based off of soil type and yield maps. So we can look in the past and say, this area is too wet, this area is too dry, this area makes high yield, this makes low yield, high fertility, low fertility, and we can say, this area is capable of growing 300 bushel corn and this area is only capable of 100. So we'll plant 20,000, all the way down to 20,000 plants per acre, maybe 24 on the really, really dry spots up to 36, there's maybe some 37,000 uh, per acre in there. We don't get as high as some guys. Some guys will push up into the 40s. We just haven't seen a return from that. I think it makes, at least up here anyway, it makes our stocks thinner, more brittle, not as strong. So we don't like to go that high. It's just extra seed cost, but pretty cool technology anyway. Now, I gotta go to a haircut appointment. I schedule my haircuts because I'm 30 minutes from where I do it, and if you want somebody to cut this hair and not look like Lloyd Christmas from Dumb and Dumber, you gotta go with somebody that's good, and to do that, you have to schedule a haircut. So I schedule them. If you guys wanna make fun of me for that, please do so in the comments down below so that everybody can join in. Much better. Hi, can I get a uh, the flamethrower meal, the third pound, number seven, and then a uh, small cookie dough blizzard? But either way, Dan. Uh, it's error, uh, user error. Go okay. sure. Neighbor called. He's got a feed truck stuck next to the hog barn, so uh, they don't they don't have a tractor there currently. The guys that own the hogs don't live there. Guess what? On wants a ride. Anyway, I'm gonna grab a yankum rope and put a little weight on the front of this thing. I need to put the push blade for the snow away anyway and I can't get to the regular bucket because it's behind that trailer so I'm just gonna put the snow bucket on like I say I gotta put it away anyway and it should help having a little weight on the front of the tractor when I pull this oh miss the hooks now this is the big rope there's a link down below for yank and ropes they make 
many different sizes. They got hard shackles, soft shackles, all kinds of cool stuff for uh, recovery, pulling, whatever you need. Stay. That's the two inch 30 foot rope. It shows 131,000 pounds. I'm pretty sure they make bigger stuff than that, but this is what we've used. And we got the shaft shackles that'll hook around anything. So then you're, then you're putting rope on stuff. Yep, I, I don't know if the camera picks it up or not, but he's probably in that truck that's half sunken into the ground back there. It's a muddy time of the year, especially with all the snow and the rain coming and going. Oh, he's in deep on the right side. He slipped right off there. I suppose it's tough for him to back into those feeders the way they're positioned. Come on. There's movement. There we go. Well, that wasn't so bad. He was full on feed, so I was being pretty careful there. I don't... I don't know. The, the rope absorbs a lot. They're pretty awesome. What a slop fest. As Alan the lawn care nut would say, that was my nickname in college. Something tells me I'd be just fine leaving the ropes and chain and the shackles hanging on this machine because we might not be done pulling things out of the mud. But I did call Jim and let him know that there's no point in coming out this afternoon. If I'm not gonna be down in that black mud hooking machines up and we don't have a lot to do in the shop right now we got plenty of time obviously we're not going to be planting in the next couple days so he's going to stay home for the rest of today so i'm going to keep tinkering here and even though i pumped this pit out two days ago i'll pump it out again this is our containment area for the fuel barrels in case we'd ever have a leak or a spill it's contained within here but we can't have it on an automatic pump for obvious reasons if one of those tanks goes bad we don't want to be pumping anything out that shouldn't be pumped out. I was going to wait till the yard wasn't so sloppy to unhook this, but it just kind of seems like the yard's going to be sloppy forever, so we'll get it off there now. Jim and I fixed this lock, and I've bent two of these. We fixed this one again, but it doesn't, it doesn't stay out like it's supposed to. There. Stay. That went exactly how it's supposed to, which is not normally the case. Oh, <laughs> well, look at that. It's a new day. Anna's very excited about the beauty of this time of year. Seems like only yesterday I was talking about how every time it starts to get a little bit dry, things get wet again. The snow's not currently coming down, I don't think. It's just a 40 mile an hour wind gust right now that's blowing the stuff around. But since about 5 a.m. this morning, it's been pretty nasty out. So I, right now, I'm gonna head a few places. Gotta go to the post office, the bank, the license bureau, the tire shop, and I gotta have lunch with a guy about a thing. Potentially something that could bring some content to this channel and a, more importantly, be a good investment for the farm, for myself, over time. But that's all I'm gonna say about it right now because we really haven't gotten into any specifics. I have no idea if it's gonna happen, so I'm gonna leave you hanging. You're not gonna find out. Well, did you keep the place safe while I was gone? Need anyone? Maybe did jade somebody. She's looking a little husky. Get down. Jeez. Well, lunch was, jeez, ditch. All right, we get it. It's not nice out, you want inside. Stepping under my feet is not recommended. Are you good? No, not you, get out of here. Get. Got your paw a little bit there? Lay down, have a rest. 
Stop eating the back of her head, please. I think they're probably fine. Afternoon, Jim. What a lovely spring day, huh? You got this done. It's about time to go on the field. About time? You want me to close the hood on it? That's too heavy. I'm not going to do that. So this one we had, I for, had forgotten, but we did have it in the spring last year. And I think it did more tillage than the other one. So it's maybe got 150 hours on it. We'll see what the filters say and then... This one did more tillage than the other one? This one did more than the other one, yeah. I think so. Because that other one had that strip tiller on it forever. So this one ended up with the Ripper on it, and then the Mendeco, and then the Wishick. So we'll see what the filters say once we get through the panels. I don't need to open that one. That one there says 1161 hours. Changed March. I'll fire it up and see what's on it now. I don't know if you guys can hear the sound of that German Shepherd or not, but she... <laughs> I've said it many times, I'll say it again. We need a million subscribers to get Anna in here and make her happy. But I'm telling you, it might make a really interesting video actually, because I think fur is going to fly everywhere and she's going to hate it. Buffering. Still buffering. Now we just got to remember where... I haven't gotten there yet. Computer just woke up. Yeah, and then I got to remember where it's at. Hmm. What the hell, though? <laughs> go under engine, I think. I, would. I don't know where that's at. Engine, there we go. No, oh, 13, 1374. So we had 1161. 1161. It's got 215 hours on it, 213. Oh. We'll let it warm up a little bit to heat the oil because then it drains better into the pan when the oil's warmer and lighter. And then we'll pull it forward a little bit farther up into the main bay. We're going to end up doing a little bit more to it than I thought we were. Not sure I got an oil filter for that thing. Luckily I just drove past John Deere 30 minutes ago. No. No, I don't. Maybe it takes the same fuel filters though as the couple other ones. This one's got the it's got the 15 liter in it instead of the 13. dandy fluid all roller or drain pan thingy on wheels with the handle and the screen that pumps into the for the waste oil is more full than we want it right now and I'm not going to carry it across the yard right now to pump it out so I'm just going to grab some buckets for this job there they are old school buckets oh no oh no you guys okay I'll get you a towel the fluid all pan is really nice, but this tractor's luckily got plenty of clearance under it. We don't necessarily need it, but uh, but it is handier. And it's necessary when you're changing oil under a truck that doesn't have enough room for a big old bucket. You go there. Do not make a mess. feel what's happening, but I don't know what I'm doing. Here we go. Ah. <sighs> <laughs> I'll think i put this one, the ITC with the Jimmy rig, WAS signal, on this rig for now. Still going. Yep. 
It takes a long time to let two or three pounds of air out of a giant tire like that. Oh, we never got to cleaning that mess up last fall. Uh, that one's me. That's it for junk in there. Hey, you're making an awful mess. Well, I'm cleaning the mess up. Oh, okay. So that we can make it again. There he is. Dad's back from Arizona. Grabbed us our filters. Even the dogs are happy to see him. Hi there. You came back from Arizona on a nice yeah, day. Yeah, you aren't planting corn today, huh? Not today, no. Okay. No, actually, we haven't even started yet. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people have not between here and Denver. Or Dallas. Dallas? Yeah. Uh, spin it so the vice is over here. This is my camera guy. Oh, okay. See, it goes right, right here like this. Most of the trucks are dead right now. Should I go see and... You can, yeah. On one, you think? The one in the shed over here, I had a charger on it for a while the other day and moved it out. And I left the thing off the batteries. And that's the one you put batteries in. So the one I put batteries in is right there. Does that one wouldn't start either? I don't know. I haven't oh, tried. Okay. It's been, it sat there for a couple weeks. It's cold now. It's cold now, yeah. Are, are you down to the sweeps? One, four, six, eight. In some of the bins, or? If I remember, most of them are real close. Okay, I figured that. That's 60 is still coming out of the center, the south, the, the northeast one. The northeast one is still coming out. Everything else is close. Okay. Right close. Figured it'd be pretty close. Yeah. Yeah, maybe if you'd been here all winter, you wouldn't want to drive tomorrow. Probably not, would I? No, probably not. Hmm. I can't get my... Uh, here she goes. Want to know how to start a German Shepherd? I only got two feet before I run into the back wall, so I'm going to do my best to judge and make that not happen. That pumping. She was locked in. Well, that's handy. No. I'm just kidding. It wasn't you. It's just a joke. This thing did it. <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. Did they start? The two, which ones? The, the both. two T800s. The, new the Pete started or you didn't try it? I didn't try it. So the two tra trucks that have brand new batteries are both dead. Yeah. Let's start the plug in this electric. It's got a plug in Jim, I think it's electric. It went all the last call, well, it in. Get her! Oh, filter's on. Come on, spinny thing. Stupid plastic safety cap garbage. Probably made in China. China. Is worth trying right now? No. Then the other one will never start today. It's pretty cold out there. It is. I don't think it's worth it, but you sound like you want it, so go for it. Go ahead. I'll wait 15 minutes, yeah. You know what a good idea is, Jim? What's that? I wanted to take a minute and point this out. The brilliant design of having a fuel filter here with the hoses that go around the sides 
to get it in there nice and tight. So the only way to get it out is to tilt it sideways when it's <laughs> full. Spill it all over. You. Spill it down your sweatshirt and on the floor. <laughs> yep. Completely that's... missing every catch can you have in place. That's some stupid engineers. If they had to work on them, they'd change stuff. How dare you, Jim? How dare you? <laughs> is it sunny and warm out yet? It's getting better. It's getting better. One truck started, so I'll put the battery charger over to the others and I can do something. All right. I kind of want to say they're 11 16 I would, I would, I would grab the whole kit. Which ones are you trying to do? Yeah, covers for the battery and the truck. They are? That's what I meant. That's what I said. Remember I told you about the idiot engineers that put the filter there? Yeah. I didn't mention anything about the idiot farmer that feels it's so full. He's got to dump half of it back out to get it in there. Yeah, but see, that's the problem. Now you're only half full. I know. That'll take. What if Run we... the batteries down to fill it up. We could drill a hole in the very top of it and funnel some diesel in, and then once <laughs> it's full, we silicone it. Yeah, Wait a couple days work. for that to dry. You want to see a big man? <laughs> yes, I do. I kind of do. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> Maybe it's running out the goddamn bottom. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. We'll know that in a minute. Yeah, don't work too hard, dogs. Okay. I'm ready. Uh, let, le actually, leave the key on for a minute with the fuel filters being off. Are you making any noise? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Must have been enough fuel in it. You gotta be careful when you change filters. You don't want to air lock them. You get air in the system. Damn, who made this all sloppy over here? I Go did that. Zach. Damn engineer. <laughs> I admitted to it. The engineers. Damn engineers. Damn engineers. A couple quarts, probably. Yeah. Well, Dad and Jim are going to finish some stuff up with that tractor. I got a head in the house here. I've got a conference call I gotta be on. Then I'll be back out here in, in a little bit. All right, it's time for one of my favorite times of the month. But in order to show you guys everything, I've gotta get my elaborate, fancy show-off table ready here. I still think the automatic down tailgates are just weird. Bespoke Post is the monthly membership that actually delivers awesome boxes of stuff, really cool stuff from top quality brands directly to your house. The membership itself is actually free and each box is valued at roughly $70 but you actually only pay a fraction of that cost. About 90% of the products actually come from small businesses and many of them are actually from right here within the US. P3 flashlight. Look at that. You could clasp your flashlight on that guy right there. We've got a Tactica M250 hex drive tool kit. You see it's a lot like Christmas only better because you don't have to sit down with the family and pretend to enjoy stuffing and turkey or anything like that. Ooh, got six bottles. Not hot and not sorry. Kill sauce. Jamaican sauce, Jamaican hot sauce. I have no idea how to pronounce that, but smoky ghost pepper goodness, very hot. Original habanero, triple extra hot. Spicy sweet soy sauce, hob sauce. Six different bottles of hot sauce here to add to the already cool three products that I've got. This one's gonna involve fire in some way or another, which is always fun. We got a s'more kit right here. Classic s'more kit ticket chocolate. Campfire stories deck, is this a deck of cards? Prompts for igniting stories by the fire. This will actually might be really cool sitting around the fire camping. It's a Bego small batch fire starter that kindles. So fire and food, one log fire, handmade in Minnesota. Hey, I know where that's at. And of course, you can't make s'mores without the proper s'more forks. There, that'll come in handy for the kids. They love making s'mores when we're camping. I love eating s'mores when we're camping. All in one monthly subscription. Now, if you guys are interested in this, all you gotta do is check out the link down in the description and enter the code FARMER20. That's FARMER20, all caps, 
at checkout, or you can go to bespokepost.com slash farmer20. Once you're there, it's going to walk you through a questionnaire that looks just like this. You can let them know if you are not interested in things, or if you are very interested in things, or if you're open to try stuff, you can go right through and check out the things just like I'm doing here. Bespoke Post is going to have a pretty good idea of what they believe that you're going to be interested in. So they'll send it to your house. Once you open it, you can keep the stuff you like, the stuff that you don't like. You can actually either exchange that for a different box or you can skip the month entirely for absolutely no charge. That way you are always guaranteed to actually like the things that you get in your boxes and your little gifts that you bought yourself. This stuff right here, I'm going to go ahead and put in the camper directly right away. It's almost camping season. Thank <laughs> you.